everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for our Quick Tip Thursday webinar. And today's session is going to be about creating a black and white HDR from a single image. So Topaz Black and White Effects, one of our black and white conversion program, contains an adaptive exposure technology that can help to create HDR type of effects. And it does this with only one single image. So that's what we're going to be discussing here today. There are various techniques, of course, of using a single image, maybe using it through your raw processor and actually creating three different JPEGs, and then taking that through a traditional HDR, progr HDR program, merging those files, and kind of tone mapping that way. But today we're just going to take one file um, through black and white effects and get a very similar ending effect. A lot of people might think when speaking about HDR, um, they might not necessarily think about uh, black and white. With, um, you know, with HDR, immediately a lot of people think about those really saturated or really um, vibrant colors that come out and aren't necessarily thinking about the tonality. Well, within black and white or monochromatic images, the ability to really open up your shadow areas and bring detail into your highlights just will really take um, your image to the next level as far as black and white is concerned. So being able to work and create HDR effects in your black and white imagery I think can be very impactful. And it's very simple with certain programs such as black and white effects. So we're going to start off with this particular image. I thought this would be a great one to choose because it has a lot of um, uh, exposure issues with it. We have some blown out highlight areas where the, high, where the light is coming through these slots. We have some really dark shadow areas where we're losing some of this really important detail. Um, this is actually an image shot from one of the um, underground bunkers in Normandy. So um, I didn't have a lot of time to take it. There were a ton of people and I probably shot um, 15 or 16 different frames and all of them had people in it except for this one. <laughs> so, because uh, it was quite a big touristy type of day. and. Um, so I thought, you know, I could actually take this in and really pull and stretch using this adaptive exposure technology to bring that detail into my shadows and highlights at the same time with just a couple little movements. So I was able to uh, quickly take it into black and white effects. This is a bit of a strong adjustment, but was able to, with just a few different selections, end up with this image. And this is straight out of the camera. I did crop just a little bit. And then, because I had a person's arm over here on the right. And then um, just use the adaptive exposure technology, a little bit of a paper and um, paper and silver tone in the finishing touches, a little bit of a basic adjustment, and just added a quick border. So we'll go through this whole process and how quickly it is, and show how quickly it is to get this um, HDR type of an effect. So let's go ahead and take this background image make a quick copy and hop on in to black and white effects. All right, it already has, uh, this isn't the exact ending, but it does have some preset, um, preset, I'm sorry, adjustments in there because that was what I last used and that's what will be immediately applied to your image. So I'm just going to come down and what I did was press reset all. The adaptive exposure technology where the um, HDR effects are going to be located is in the very top, your conversion tab here. So I'm just going to open up that conversion. And by default, even when you reset all, the basic exposure is going to be checked, even though everything is at zero. This is a just grayscale conversion when you first um, take it into black and white effects. But it's the adaptive exposure that has this adaptive exposure in regions technology. When I first just check this on, which it will apply this kind of lower default uh, adjustment, and you'll just see a little bit of a pop. You'll start to see some detail being, or light coming into your shadow regions, as well as detail being brought into your highlights at the same time. But you can really push this quite far to get a more, um, traditional HDR type of feel to it, and that is going to be with your first and then your adaptive exposure. 
as you take your region sliders up, what it will do is start to separate your image into more and more different regions. It does this, you can think about it like adding a grid to your image. And as you take the region sliders up, there's more and more squares to that grid. So there's more rows and more columns and it just starts to get very localized in the adjustments. You won't see a lot of changes if your adaptive exposure is down far, but what you will start seeing are a lot of changes as you start taking this adaptive exposure up. So as I start to take this up, when my regions are set up very high, you'll start to see a lot of localized exposure adjustments happening. So as you can see up here in my really textured areas, I've brought in a lot of detail to my shadow regions, but interestingly, at the exact same time, I'm able to bring in a lot of detail to my highlight areas, and that's really what HDR is all about, just expanding that uh, dynamic range within your image. This is a little bit strong for me, so I'm just going to take that down a notch. So I'm still maintaining a really nice highlight, a really nice uh, black area, but getting a lot of detail throughout the image. I would probably do a couple other things with this particular image because my highlights are, so I'll probably protect my highlights a bit. That'll start to protect them. Now, there are, I, I do have a loss of information because again, this one was, this is just one frame. So I wasn't able to take the multi exposures, but really it can work with this quite a bit and bring some nice um, tone in there with a couple different techniques. I'm also going to take my detail up because I have all this really nice, uh, nice uh, texture to work with and having it a little bit more of a texture pop really works for these types of grungy images. Here's before, here's after. This is a little strong for me still so I'm just going to take this down a notch. I might do my process details independently and then come in and work with my detail on my own. That's, I like that better. Here's before, here's after. If you start to feel your image getting a little bit grungy, it's almost like that kind of over-processed HDR type of feel where especially in images where you have a lot of flat areas like skies or skin, if it starts to get a little too grungy as you're working with this single image um, HDR effect, you can Click on the process details independently. That's going to separate your details processing from the adjustment exposures, which are by default connected. So even if you don't t touch your detail sliders, if this is unchecked and you're moving your exposure slider to the right in your region slider, you'll start to notice your details get enhanced as well. So to uh, do things and really control your details in a very specific way. You can check this and then work with your detail slider. So I'm pretty happy here. There's a few other things I'm going to do within my basic exposure. I think I'm going to take my uh, brightness down just a touch. I'm kind of wanting more gloomy type of a feel here. Uh, I might, I'm going to leave my blacks right where they are. I really like that I have some strong blacks here but that my really dark shadows have opened up for those detail. But I am going to take my boost whites down to try to bring as much tonality into my white area as I can. Here's before, here's after, and I'm pretty happy there. So I'm just going to come on down to my finishing touches. I'm going to click on my silver and paper finishing touch just to get that warm feel that you saw. By default, it's going to have this kind of warm tone, warm paper tone uh, feeling to it. If you want that to be stronger, you can just open up your tonal strength and as I'm doing here. And then last but not least, I'm just going to add a quick border. And I know exactly the type of border I want for this. I think it was, was it three? No, I think it was something similar, but not quite. There it is, seven. Just increase that size. And here's how I achieved that single image, black and white, HDR type of an effect. So just to recap, all we did was go in and use our adaptive exposure uh, and region sliders, did some protecting of my highlights because I am just working with a single image, worked with my detail and detail boost to really bring out some of those um, textures and areas like that um, that have a lot of detail in it that you want to enhance, worked with my basic exposure, brightness, and boost whites just a touch, and then came down and added some... Uh, paper and silver tone as well as a border. I'm just going to press OK.
And there you have it. Thanks so much and have a great uh, evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. We'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.